Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at Joe Matarera. Uh, unfortunately, I lost the original audio for this video. My mouse fell off of my uh, desk about five minutes in and it hit the USB, I guess, going down. And so when I finished the video, I realized that I had like five minutes of audio and then no... Um, <laughs> nothing for the remaining 25 minutes but I did draw overs in this video which I rarely rarely do in these sort of reviews so I figured it was actually worth salvaging the video and just doing narration over it as opposed to uh, reshooting it because I don't have the energy to do back to back I mean honestly I'm spending 50 minutes on a video that is like you know what I mean just a sort of a, a fun thing so anyway um this will be fine. So, uh, Joe Matarera broke in, um, probably in the early nineties. Um, I met a guy who actually went to high school with him just this past year at Comic-Con. And, uh, he said Joe was great. You know, he said in high school, he was, he was just a killer, killer artist. And I think by the age of about 17, 16, 16, I think he was interning at Marvel doing just sort of odd jobs. And I think by 17, um, they started to feed him some short stories, something like that. And, uh, you know, he's just, he's a great, great penciler. Um, he, uh, he's really, really clever with his layouts. I was, I was going to say, um, if you, the middle panel on that was a silhouette. Uh, so anyway, we're moving to the Inhumans work. This stuff was all colored over the original pencils. And um, he's great with shapes. So you'll see like um, hair, sinewy muscle. Uh, he really uses that um, in a very three-dimensional way. I was talking about here the anatomy on her, how simple it was. But his, his overall cartoony forms are really, really solid. He's got these great cylinders and sort of bowling pin shapes and then we're going to take a closer look at this guy uh, I, st I start talking about the upshot um, on his head and uh, I had done a lesson earlier this morning I did two in fact in a row um, uh, where uh, I was breaking down heads for people at trickier angles and um, Joe does it really really nicely and um, we go into full screen mode here, and uh, we should be moving along. Some of the sequential pages, you'll see me move through a little bit quicker. The reason being is that I had so many files open, I wanted to make sure that we were able to enjoy a wide variety of his work. So I start out a little slower, but you'll see in a few minutes, I start hustling through some of the more, I don't know, like I was calling pedestrian pages, just mean talking heads or stuff like that. Uh, people ask me, where do I get the, the scans for all this stuff? Generally speaking, um, I grab them off the internet. So these were off of his art dealer site, quanchang.com and uh, this is one of the figures that I talk about. Like, if you look at how boxy his forms are and how three-dimensional they are, it, it's how he lights the form. So he's got light coming from behind that character. And then any plane, meaning any sort of, uh, well, plane, uh, like edge of, of the boxes that he creates for the anatomy will either catch light or they won't or they'll have gray meaning like rendering and that's how you light stuff so i kind of show right here like just simple form going over it like the topography of the muscles and you see like that's the light plane and then it goes into the dark because that dark area is a um side plane and that's how he indicates that stuff and that's how he's making those decisions on the abs well this chest like look i'll split it into like three pieces you see and it's like again if you can think wireframe on this stuff it will really really help and uh, then I show the back muscles really quick or it's like a simple shape that you can throw in there because I, I had a, done a Bridgman lesson for uh, another person that wasn't working on heads and hands that uh, how you can set up figures with just those landmarks you know and being able to move those landmarks around really helps so one thing that Joe did a lot in battle chasers was silhouettes generally speaking and this isn't a cross the board statement he would throw up he would throw a silhouette on just about every page and I I actually loved the way that it looked I always felt it was quite dynamic and um, it gave it like a little bit of a, a sense of breathing room and then also you know, I talk about that, like letting the person who's reading your comic book have an opportunity to use their imagination and things like that, things in shadow, things that are diffused and are less detailed, uh, give the person an opportunity to 
participate in viewing your art and some people enjoy that i've worked with pencilers who literally draw everything that they want you to see and then you know some that that don't and for my own personal work i tend to like to let them have a little bit of fun with the images and use you know they can be quite detailed but i still try to have stuff sort of um diffuse or fall into black one or the other and joe's layouts are great you can see he's really pulling from left to right here. I can't use the pointer uh, as much as I would normally in a video, but it's fine. This video is really, really good. So, And again, you can see that sort of skeletal monster that that guy's sort of talking to. Joe's great with that. I think I moved through these kind of quick. He does houses great. Uh, it's funny. The Victor Bogdanovic did a page in Death dead shot that was very similar to that woman in the hospital but it's funny I sort of break down this guy's head just the tiniest bit but again i'm just showing the planes of the head and how his forms are so chunky and three-dimensional and uh how solid it is you know he just he's got these great masses like the nose that's just that big hunk of um geometry there and the eye sock or the eye the, the lower lid how it's it's like a a shape that wraps around the eye and the eye sits inside of that pocket it's just rock solid rock solid drawing the same here i go over the ab and show do you see the planes that lower plane where the shadow is and then the upper plane they're just basically like little little rectangles and then this you see goes over that her breast, the same deal. It's like, you know, if you can think of it as like a wireframe, it'll help you place costume and stuff like that over it. So, you know, the more you can feel it. And to see, they get tighter. The lines get tighter as they go away from us or further up around the, the spherical shape. This is a great page. I honestly can't tell what the object is that's silhouetting behind or not silhouetting but the thing that's sitting behind those panels this is great though look at the guy's arm and that goo is starting to like attach to him or it's coming out of him i'm not sure which i was when i when i did this page i actually didn't remember it in the comic or or even seen the scan before but yeah that is that on his back i have no idea what that big thing is behind the panel but it looks really cool and it looks very fleshy and meaty <laughs> That little city. He draws great trees. His trees are always really, really cool. They're very three-dimensional. They're very cartoony. And, again, he uses the black in there to really kind of play it up. Stuff is nice. I was saying, I think, at this point that, that uh, when Joe... When Joe really got rolling on Battle Chasers, I do think that his work was very, very influential to a lot of people. Even before that, I think a lot of people have a nostalgia to... Um, Joe's work because there was a lot of teenagers and people kind of getting into comic books at that point and I think Joe was like a little bit of a hero to them because he was a young artist and uh, was awesome you know S stuff is all classic he's done that kind of stuff in so many of his comics with that weird smoky fleshy bones and monsters sort of and again, we'll move through some of these pretty quick. This was kind of interesting. It, it caught my eye because the way that the black was filled in on the page looked different. Like, I don't know what he used to fill that in, but it looks very, very different than the rest of the pencil stuff. I don't know if it's like a dry marker or what it was, but this is real cool. That cop, like, that's such a great little gesture there. And then that's two-point perspective. Uh, I, I'm showing where the vanishing points are right now, and uh, they go off, but... Um, yeah, there's one over there, and then eye level cuts right about there. And so you can find the vanishing points off to the left and right. And this is two-point perspective, too. And I, I was complimentary towards the fact that he had actually drawn the Statue of Liberty and didn't just get a photo and, like, lightbox it. Or now I'm, I'm sure you could get, like, a Google SketchUp model of it. But there's, there's just a connection that you're going to have to an artist who actually spends the time just working out the drawing it's going to look more like their stuff you know the structure of the, of a 3d model isn't going to have the same um character some people can blend it in better than others though but generally speaking i would just prefer to see someone just draw it 
This stuff is all really cool. He's great with action, these fight scenes and stuff like that. He really moves the camera around great. He crops things well. Um, you know, like look at that guy's fist in that second panel. It was like actually partially out. This is great. Kind of has a Kira vibe. I was saying his rocks are awesome too. They're always real chunky and um, he'll put like cool shadows on them and stuff like that. It's always really nice. Good stuff. We'll probably move through these a little quicker. Nice energy. Oh, yeah. This cartoony girl is really funny. I don't know what's going on with her, but it almost looks like Gully, but Gully, like, um, so, like, I don't even know. We move through those. They're nice pages, but I had so much good stuff open, I wanted to get to that, so we hustle through these. But again, you could probably find most of these scans on quanchang.com. Or if not, I'm sure they exist in the Google, the Google land. It's really, really cool. If I'm not mistaken, Joe got up to issue 10 of Battle Chasers. I would have loved to have seen more. It really was probably my favorite comic book coming out at that time when it was coming out. And I, I like Joe's stuff before he started it, but the, the genre of the book and the character designs and stuff like that really, really won me over. And also the beautiful colors. Liquid just did a killer, killer job on it. So, um, yeah, all that together really made it a fun book. And Tom McWeeny's inks were great on it, too. Um, so on this one, I talked about the side views a little bit and how... Joe did a pretty effective job of using profiles in this, too, in fact. Um, and I think part part of what made it work is the fact that they are back-to-back -back and sort of facing off. But you do have the lower figure and then the one <clears throat> to the right of the monster guy that are facing forward. So it kind of balances things out. Also, the angle that he has the um, monster guy's head. He's kind of looking in at us. He's starting. It feels like he's starting to turn his head towards us. If you look at his lips... You can see there's a center seam that's not on the side, but then her profile, the angle of it, made, made it work. Because her head was sort of tilted down. Some really great 3D shapes on this piece. Like he's got the hair really kind of just coming in and out. And, um, you know, you can just see these nice, almost like Saturn like rings to it where it's just, it's going up and down. And it's like a roller coaster ride. It's a very, very cool page. Man, that is so awesome. It's a really, really great figure. His knee and thigh really looks great. That hand, too, in that bottom panel is awesome. It was funny because there was a video... I think it was I had done the book twice. So it was on the channel once before, and then I had done it more recently. And it was funny watching the two videos. I think it was the Silvestri, how consistent I was with what I pointed out. So it was, it was funny to see the two because they were very, they were different but similar. And I would generally tend to gravitate towards uh, pointing out things that were pretty consistent. It was, it was trippy. Man, that second panel, that guy's face is great. This is cool. I talk about the uh, the planes again here a little bit more. How the light source is obviously coming from that guy that's burning up in front of him. But what I show you is like the simple forms that he's lighting so anything facing the fire is gonna be white because it's so hot so that's facing the fire that thing and then the side plane i screwed it up at first though, but that that's a side plane so it's gonna have shadow and it transfers over even into his arm and if there was another plane that was facing the fire it will be white and then that side plane is that and so like right there the arm that front plane is white the side plane is black and then the little muscle right there you've got that shape but then this the one that's right in front of it is facing forward on the neck that's behind it and then that is pulling forward so the white is a shape in front again i'm gonna do a video for patreon for everyone on patreon right after i film this i'm gonna go over bridgman and talk about this stuff a little bit more so they'll get a nice drawing video today about the planes of the body and then um, how stuff interlocks. Let me move through these pretty quick. It's a nice spread.
She's the mystery lady in panel two. She's all silhouette. That's really cool. And did I talk about anything else in this? I think I zoom in on that face with her standing. That's like the third panel across the bottom in a sec. Yeah, that panel right there is really cool. The second to last one is great. Love the light coming out of the mouth. It's got kind of like that Aladdin vibe when the thing. Oh, yeah, and this was cool, too. So on this piece, what I was saying is, like, if you got the script and it was like, we need the guy, like, climbing up the mountain, you know, big shot. I, I mean, I would have never pictured something as dramatic as what Joe did. But, boy, I'll tell you what, pulling in that close on the guy instead of maybe a more pulled back shot with, like, you're showing more of the, the mountain and, like, the figure is smaller. He just nailed it with that that first hand in the foreground and how the shapes overlap and then go down to him. I mean, that's just a 10 out of 10. He made such a good decision on that and he executed that drawing so well. And it's just like, man, remember stuff like that. When you're trying to problem solve something from a script, I go through these quick because I want to get to the um, character designs. But yeah, when you see something like that where someone really raised the bar on an idea, if you can picture what the script might have said, um, that'll help you like have the um, patience to try multiple ideas for um, trans translating something from the written word. You know, a guy kicks in a door. Maybe your first idea is a little too tame. You know, amp it up. So anyway, with this, uh, I'm nearly sure this is the Joker. Um, Joe is great with mouths and teeth, um, and they're very very distorted and crazy but he really gets the idea of the jaw and how the teeth you know go uh sit in it and so um it's definitely worth going back and checking that out so this horse is great he's great with animals too really really powerful anatomy on that and that thing is just looks great the the saddle and all the sort of weird i don't know what you call it like bony masses coming out of it are great it's a cool idea too i mean basically you know printed out the horse and then just tried different armor designs over it. It's an effective way to uh, do it. This is a beautiful piece. This is the cover for Ultimates, um, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, this is probably colored from the pencils. And uh, man, it's just awesome. Speaking of that, you can actually get a pencils-only version of the Ultimates in hardcover. I have it, and I have the color version, too, in hardcover. But it's very, very rare, and it's very expensive. To find it now is really difficult. Um, but, uh, yeah, there is an Ultimate. I can't think of what the exact title of it is, but it is, it's the whole series that he did. Just the pencils and lettering. So... But it's going to run you probably 150 to 250 bucks, if not more. They're real scarce. Sucks. I didn't realize it was so, was so hard to get. I had bought it when it came out. <clears throat> but if you've got deep pockets, you could pull the trigger on that at some point. They don't even really pop up on eBay or Amazon that often, honestly. That Venom is so badass. His Venom is great all the time. His Blob is good, too. The teeth. I mean, and again, look at Sabretooth's teeth so feral and just man he sinks it in there this is just the <clears throat> the i slide his spider-man is great too well the whole thing is great <laughs> super dynamic there wasn't one boring pose on that this is awesome <clears throat> the colors are very dark but you know what it looks beautiful that like lava sort of effect coming out of the sword is so killer and i mean that dude is just a tank this is great too Look at that. You see that guy in a forest? You're running for it. Or begging for mercy. <laughs> His guns are awesome. He does, like... Joe has the ability to draw just about everything looking cool. And if you can get that, you don't have to draw it like Joe, but if you can break down stuff and make everything look cool, people will love your art. It's just the way that it is. You can do it 150 different ways, thousands of different ways. If you can make everything look cool, you're set. <laughs> Sounds simple, right? You have to have good taste and a good combination of, of influences, you know. Put it through your filter and then deliver the goods. <clears throat> it's nice. Nicey spicy. Oh, yeah, look at that 
Horsey. <laughs> Things got muscles on muscles. Mad. Oh yeah, this guy's cool. Oh, this is, uh... I inked a piece of this dude. Oh, what was it called? Oh, Iron and the Maiden. Yeah, that's right. Uh, funny, that cover almost looks like Umberto Ramos. This is really, really cool. The next piece, too, is this without the um, the trade dress. But, uh, man, look at how thick his Hulk's neck is. I was tripping out on... Even though he's at an angle, his the thickness of his neck is so thick, it actually is protruding past his head, like his jaw and stuff like that. <clears throat> it's wild. I was saying that like I would have probably stopped it right there, but Joe just has it like connected way higher up. It's just brutal. So gnarly. Man, that is great. And this is without the uh, logo. And the pose of, uh, I'm assuming that's Thor. It's just killer. This is wild. The colors are really, really saturated, but man, look at the the, the anatomy. <laughs> it's just muscles on muscles on muscles. Everybody's flexing. We start to hustle through a little bit quicker now because I, I wasn't 100% sure how much stuff I had open, but his little character designs are great. You know, you can find this stuff. There's, I think there's a Joe Mad Facebook page that has a lot of it. And then you could go through his Instagram, joemad.com, and then just Google the stuff. I mean, it's out there. There's um, a fan site, too, where they've kind of archived all of his stuff. I have no idea what it's called, but um, it's, it's a comic book site where it'll have all the covers and stuff like that. People love Joe's art, so it's it's... There's nothing in this video that you couldn't find. And in fact, the video is at 1080p anyway. Just screenshot it if you really want it that bad. I zoom in on most of this stuff pretty good anyway. <clears throat> His big characters are so cool looking. Oh yeah, I draw, I draw a little bit of anatomy on this to just show the big chunky plant pieces that he uses. But, you know. His forms are great. The kneecap is awesome. It's like a big wedge of rectangle right there. I kind of pull it out and sort of show what he's doing. Might need it to be turned just a tiny bit more, but uh, I think I tweak it at the end like that it goes that way down. But yeah, you know, and here there's the box that sits there, and then the muscles wrap around it and sort of hold everything in. And then down here, I was saying, you know, it's it's not as hard as people think to draw all this stuff once you start learning your fundamental shapes. And that's why these guys have huge growth spurts, because when you lock that in, like drawing a foot, it's not a big deal. It really isn't. Um, hands, all that. It's, but if you don't understand just simple forms, you're going to have trouble setting it up. And then there, there's a whole other can of worms that comes after that detailing stuff and rend rendering it and i'm not just talking about like understanding where light comes from but like the style you put on it and the choices that you make that that gets harder but but if you have a good structure your your pieces will will look good anyway like this it's man this is a great little drawing this is cool shaman that's really cool Jojo, maybe we'll look at some Joe Matarera hands for your next video if you watch this. It was I had said when I saw this in the the video when I was shooting it that I I've I've watched a walkthrough of of uh, Dark Siders and I. Th I think that that was from the game. I, I vaguely remember that environment. It kind of the, a lot of environments in those kind of games look like that. I go over this too really really fast. Like this big kind of Bridgman esque um, shape that he's got here, and the muscles wrap over and they lock into here, and you've got this, and then he just really has fun with these other muscles that are sort of connecting up in here, and then the elbow. And then I, that line got a little away from me. The um, fat right there, but yeah, the anatomy just wraps around, and then you want to have the bones for the the finger joints, and then again that topography. If you can feel the form and understand a wireframe over it, then you're gonna see where the side planes are. You're gonna see how to light it. Watch, I show real quick. Side plane, side plane. You know, 
and he's got that nice kneecap there and the anatomy is you know similar to human anatomy even though it's animal anatomy but he's kind of doing that leg it could have been i mean the way he draws it actually looks like a human leg and then back there it definitely gets tougher that's a that's a more tricky spot especially going back like that this stuff is all real cool i'm kind of starting to wrap up the video at this point it's, it's like i needed to get back to work sadly i had to shoot the audio again so it didn't even benefit me this playstation magazine the resident evil it's very very cool would be fun this is old this is a 1997 batman joe had already been working professionally though for at least four or five years at that point i would guess so this is cool i thought the framing on this piece was really really interesting that he pulled it to the side but i think it's a playstation magazine cover and there's probably a lot of text that they run to the left and above it so that's i think the reason why it's cool i remember all these this is the street fighter comic i actually have this comic it's funny because it's colored by udon um it'll it'll pop up in a second there's some pages from it but yeah that was pretty cool oh, there you go yeah so he did a short story in um, a street fighter comic colored by udon so it was before he had worked with liquid if i'm not mistaken this teenage mutant ninja turtles piece is amazing it's inked by tim townsend and boy the two of them together they just crushed this piece it's absolutely beautiful look at those stretch on his mouth and and even his head and neck it's just such fun shapes and he really, really cartoons the shit out of it. Even the the chain. How do you see how it's kind of curving as it's coming out? Now, he didn't do the um, uh, more chunky chain that we were looking at uh, yesterday. I can't remember who it was off the top of my head. That turtle's great too, by the way. We've done so many videos now; it's all starting to blur together for me. And the lighting on the the mutant ninja turtles' heads, like. That is just awesome. Oh, and then I show the the throwing stars and how they're at perspective and how you can kind of work that out. If you if you can find the box that sits around it, I show that I'm kind of pulled away from it. So that's the shape that it's sitting in. And then when you have to draw the the throwing star, if you work in that three dimensional space of the, the the planes are getting foreshortened, it makes it much easier to draw that stuff in. Um, not only perspective that one was drifting a little bit I had the um the angle the the vertical lines were off a little bit but anyway but there's a vanishing point over there that he's kind of pulling it to and the lines are converging and so once you find you can just kind of grid it out put an x find the center and you can build it out and i show that one is sitting in a box too that's off right there it should should be uh i i didn't realize it was rotated but I fix it in a second. I was like, when I started to do the detail, I was like, oh, wait a second. It's actually turned. So it actually goes like this. There you go. And then, then you find the center point, get the X, and you can fill that stuff in because it's divided now. Divided in half, divided across. <clears throat> I remember that. I couldn't remember what that was from. Um, Wonder Woman. That's 98. Little skeleton guy again. And then we're pretty much wrapping it up here. All right. Hopefully that was fun to look at. And um, what we're going to do this afternoon is still up to debate. But anyway, smash the like, please. Subscribe. If you can, share the video. I would actually really, really appreciate it. You don't have to share this one. But at some point, share something of mine and help me grow the channel. So, all right. And then check out Patreon if you want to get your learn on. Uh, it will really be awesome for you. And uh, speaking of learning that was some of the bridgman that i was going over and breaking it down for people so that they can draw powerful powerful drawings like joe Matarera, silvestri frazetta i mean just right on down the line all right have a good one bye